Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On my first day in seminary, in the first class, after everyone in the class introduced themselves at length over Zoom, the first thing the professor taught us was to think of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit like this. She invited us all to get up out of our chairs and join her. Feel free to join me as well if you like, just keeping in mind we have 15 seconds before it affects the length of the service. <laughs> I was sitting in my lovely new office chair, staring at my lovely new computer in utter disbelief. Not of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but the professor's expression of them was a little surprising. I came to seminary with a desire to study God. I wanted to know just who I was addressing in my prayers, and I really wanted to find out about the Holy Spirit. This was not what I was expecting at all. Thank goodness, after everyone sat down, she went on to explain how the Trinity works to the extent that anyone can. Aha, now we were getting down to business. And it's all about love. Despite everything we see around us that contradicts it, God's love is still the most potent force in the universe. We talk about this every week in our creed and every time we say the words in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in, we stake our lives on that love that most potent love. Not only do we believe in it, we believe it. We trust it. We trust it because even in our own baptized but still sinful state, we know that God always chooses us. God doesn't need anything from us. One of the characteristics of God is that God is absolutely complete in God's self. God doesn't need us to be happy. Instead, God chose to create us. God wanted us. Hear me. The creator of the universe wanted you to walk on this earth. Not because you can do anything for God, but because of God's overflowing love. It's the same for all of creation. But love doesn't exist in a vacuum. There is a subject who loves and an object of that love. And love is that longing to see or bring about the very best for that object of love, even if it comes at a cost to the one loving. It isn't a capitulation to the beloved's every whim or even their well-considered desire but a true longing for their wholeness, their flourishing with everything that that entails. That begins with God the Father and God the Son. In the Nicene Creed that we'll say in a few minutes, we'll confess our belief in God the Father and God's only begotten, some say generated, Son. Two equal parts of a whole that loves so completely so deeply, so indescribably, that that love, that longing for wholeness and flourishing for one another, flows out into the relationship with the Holy Spirit, the third part of our triune God, the Trinity. The Holy Spirit surrounds and fills God's creation and dwells within us through our baptism. And because we were created from, from that love, the love that flows out from that relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we too are created for relationship. And to have a relationship, there must be the power of choice. 
God didn't create us to have to love God or anyone else. God created us with the longing to love and be loved by God and each other. But we have to choose it. That longing lives in all of us. And God is always choosing us, even though we are a lot of trouble. Tragically, the most potent force in the universe is not the only force. How death, evil, and sin became part of the universe is a discussion for another day. But there is no mistaking its presence in us or the world around us. It is the force that makes us ask first, what's in it for me? Or to calculate the cost of wholeness and flourishing of our neighbors in terms of what we will have to give up. It is the force that no matter how much we reject it, will not leave us alone. We sin. We utterly ignore, even actively reject, the overflowing abundance of God's love. And that force, that sin, forms a chasm between us and God. And yet, this is where we learn what real love what unconditional love, what unbridled love looks like because God, in God's infinite love and mercy for us, won't let death, evil, and sin keep us separated. Remember, God is always choosing us. From the beginning, God knew this was going to happen. From the time God created this created us from that overflowing love, God knew that darkness was going to stalk his creation and it couldn't be allowed to take over. And so as we've been celebrating for weeks, thanks be to God, the sun came to fight the battle against sin and death that we can't fight for ourselves. God the Son, Jesus, as we will confess in our creed in a few minutes, by the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man, both fully God and fully human. Jesus lived among us and subject to all of the temptations and problems of life on this earth, Jesus still lived without sin. And when his hour had come, Jesus, God incarnate, out of that overflowing, abundant, unbridled love, allowed himself to be humiliated and killed and then rose again through the power of the Holy Spirit to once and for all defeat evil, death, and sin, to close the chasm and restore the relationship that God created us for because God is always choosing us. And when we or our parents chose to respond to that longing for God within us and, and we were baptized into God's family, God the Holy Spirit came to dwell within us, each of us, because with that much unbridled, abundant, unconditional love flowing around, another vessel for it is always good. As we will confess in a few minutes, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, in Holy Communion, we will celebrate our baptism and remember God the Son's choice today to allow God's love and mercy to pour out over us, forgive us, and hold us in the relationship that God created for us. Because God is always choosing us. And in response to that overflowing, abundant, unbridled love and forgiveness, we can't help but give that love back to God and let it overflow as we care for family, friends, our neighbors in the wider world, and God's creation. And we do this in the name of love, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our one God in three persons, blessed Trinity, 
Amen.